All right guys, we are over to the coral farm today. Chris is already here inside. Today is a big day. We are constructing the sump systems for the units in the coral farm. Uh, Chris is inside, as we speak, cutting glass and installing baffles uh, in the 125 tanks that are gonna be the sumps for each system. Uh, so let's go jump inside, take a look, and see what he's got going on. Safety glasses and gloves, kids. Easy. Wow. So you keep the blade lubricated and it cuts through pretty easily, right? Very easily. So you just have to be careful because you are going to end up with uh, pretty sharp cuts on the edges there. So it can be easily sanded down with a pumice stone, something like that. And, uh, if you're reaching in your sump a lot, but here where the sumps are going to be, you're pretty much out of reach. We'll be able to touch that part. So it shouldn't be a big deal and we don't have anybody except myself and whoever else I want to have come here and help me out. The GE Silicone One, 100%, nothing about mold inhibitors, reef safe. We got one sump down, we got another sump to go, but tomorrow we're gonna be able to put these guys in. We're gonna let the silicone cure and dry overnight and we'll be able to install it in the morning. Sweet. Today at the coral farm, water change Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> So in this whole farm, we have three 115 gallon vats per system. We have four of these systems. Each system is attached to one 125 gallon sump. Each sump right here contains one CHA 16 HF pump. This pump controls all three tubs. It pumps straight up, goes behind these vats here, pumps up here and tees off. Each tee goes to each side. You have three outlets on each side. Each one of those is gonna be controlled by a ball valve. So we could uh, actually tweak and play with how much flow is going to each system. Each system then drains back out, so the ball valve will come, it'll shoot the water to the end of the vat, it'll come back out, it'll return through these one inch drains. All the one inch drains go into a one and a half inch gutter system. So both of these pipes feed down underneath, go to this pipe, joins into this one, and then that pipe has a whole piece that goes down and empties out right here into the 125 gallon sump. This is the dry fit for this system. It is almost ready to run. Right behind us over here, we have this sump. This one is the template that it's ready. So this is just very simple base, basic sumps here. You have your water dump in here, come across like a bubble trap. It'll come across this border. It'll come across where your protein skimmer will sit. It'll move its way up underneath that baffle and come into the return section here and be pumped back up across into those vats again. So the plumbing is just very easily done, but where it makes enough sense to not reduce a lot of head pressure and things like that. You can see on this system here, up and running, all done. Each ball valve fully able to be controlled like that and I'm actually going to be putting lock line into here so if we ever had to shut this system off and work on this we could shut these two ball valves off the system will stay running for the rest of the corals we can work on this for as long as we need to without affecting the rest of our systems having those ball valves is definitely key so the reason we put these baffles in the sumps is to keep the levels stable if we have a whole six foot long sump and the evaporation rate drops one inch before the auto top off kicks in the auto top off is going to pump a whole inch across that 125 gallon tank. That's a lot of water. It's a big change in salinity. We want to be as stable as possible. So we made three sections. Now we have one section where the return pump is going to sit. That one section will only drop that one inch. It's a lot less water volume being pumped in there every time it has to top off. Also, skimmers like that st stable water height. So having the protein skimmer stay at the same eight inch water level, nine inch water level, whatever it's set to, is the ideal range for that protein skimmer to stay at. No evaporation of an inch of water, and then the skimmer stops working efficiently and then goes back up before it starts working again when a top off hits. Also on the other side where the water pu pummels in, it's a lot of water coming in through the sump and you're gonna have a lot of splashing, a lot of bubbles. You wanna have that trap there so the bubbles distribute before they go into the protein skimmer chamber, before it goes into the return chamber. So today's one of the big days. We had this tank running, this whole system running for about a month now. Uh, we have finally put lights onto the system. We don't have any filtration besides the sump. The water just pours in there, goes across some live rock and back up. Today we're gonna put in the first sump that I have baffled up into the system. I'm gonna swap the sumps out and then we're gonna take these vats here. We're gonna clean all the algae off the tubs. Now that the lights have been in here, all the live rock is in here, now you're starting to get this, the ugly stage that we call it, and all the reef tanks. 
Now that we have the sumps ready, we could actually put a filtration mechanism. We're gonna use a tray with egg crate and a filter pad. Very simple, nothing too crazy. Something that we could change in and out easily. We don't have to worry about filter socks here. We're gonna take all the sides of these tubs, all the bottom of the tubs, scrub them all down really nice and clean, and it'll all be able to get trapped on the inside of that filter pad underneath in the sump. Right after that's done, we'll be able to start loading these bad boys up with some corals. All right, folks, so Chris and I are now going to be switching over the uh, new sumps. Right now we're gonna shut off the CK pump, the return pump, and get all the live rock that is currently in that sump out, and we're gonna swap them over, and you guys are gonna watch us do that, so stay tuned. Sump is switched over. There's a quick one. Keep some biological filtration going on down here in the sump as well. There won't be much live rock up there once we get the coral flats in there and all the frag racks. There'll be a couple rocks underneath, but not much. So we're just taking some of the non premium style live rock pieces to hide underneath the uh, filtration rack underneath it. Okay, Chris, so what are we doing now? First water change on the coral farm is gonna be done today. So right now we're filling this big bucket with RO water and we're gonna go mix in some salt. You see these things yet? What things? These giant buckets of salt. What? What do you mean giant buckets of salt? This is 1,050 oh. gallons of salt in one barrel. This is the Aquavitro Salinity. It is the um, the premium version of Seachem salt, uh, guaranteed analysis of all the trace elements across the board, which is one of the main reasons why I really chose this salt to use at the coral farm. Um, they were really good batch testing on everything, which a lot of salt brands do that as well. But just the quality of this salt from what I've experienced at home and seen in other places, uh, really, really quality salt. So we wanted to try something a little bit different at the coral farm than what we're used to at the store. So as everyone knows, Ocean State Aquatics, dominant Fritz salt. It's all we use. Our coral systems use Fritz salt. Our customers use Fritz salt. Our service accounts use Fritz salt. We found it to be the best bang for your buck. It's a really good quality salt for a really good price. Um, at the store, we have a lot of coral systems. It's a huge amount. So with the amount of water volume they had and the amount of water changes we do between the fish system and the coral system all on top of each other, we use something that's very affordable for us. Uh, and also our customers come in and they buy the store use. I mean, they buy our mixed water you know it's affordable for us to sell that salt and be able to supply them with good salt for their fish tanks at home what we wanted to do with the farm was a little bit different not only is it research laboratory where we wanted to experiment with different things but also we're not going to focus on a huge amount of water changes here we shouldn't really need to we don't have a ton of fish we don't have a ton of hands going in out of the tanks all the time bagging up corals for people there's not going to be a lot of um, nutrient levels in the tank not as many fish here things like that so we decided to go with the aqua vitro salinity salt for the farm it's a little bit pricier of a salt. I've been using it at home on my personal tanks and have had no issues whatsoever on any of my tanks. And I find that, you know, certain other salts along the way that I've used in the past had bad batches, you know, things like that. Funky things happen. You never really know what it is, but the salinity has been good for one and a half, one and a half years on my personal reef tank. No issue. So again, same thing with Fritz. We don't have any issues with it at the store, but we wanted to switch it up and do something a little bit different here. So we're going to mix up our first batch of water change water right now. I figure out how to open this bad boy. Woo! So now one of the reasons that we went with the Aqua Vitro Salinity Salt was the guaranteed analysis that is on the side of this barrel. Uh, the levels that they test for down to the potassium, stronium, iron, beyond that, even down to boron and zinc and all those micro, like small elements, uh, you know, my, minor trace elements, not just the major, uh, makes it appealing, you know, something that you feel is going to be worth it for you in the long run. 
Look at this, even double bagged in these giant bags. Also, that was another big part of it. Our supplier carries this salt. We don't have to go through another supplier. So on our normal everyday orders, we'll be able to get this salt at our discounted rate that we worked with Aqua Vitro on. That was another big part of it. You know, we don't, we, you know, at being a coral farm, we, we don't have the biggest budget starting this place up. We're building it from scratch. So something that was affordable to us also mattered very much. Come on, baby. Makes the first ones look like uh, they're easy. They're dude. childs, child toys. Listen, they really just played a joke on us. They don't want us using their salt anyway, so we can't even get into the bag. <laughs> I'm gonna need a pair of scissors today and using um, something from building the stands and construction nails. There should be about six of these scoops, maybe? Take a guess. Let that mix for 15, 20 minutes or so. All this salt mixing is making me thirsty. Oh, you quit. Oh, yeah, brain freeze. Salty, he's salty, she's salty, so salty. I'm saucy, drip off, then use caution, no talking. You salty, I'm frosty, diamonds talking. Let it walk in, shorty stalking. Wanna peel skin, rubber. Keep it at 100. <laughs> Dead on. <laughs> Dead nuts, first try. First try. 1.026. Here we go, baby. So now the Salindi salt does say in the bucket that you're supposed to mix it and use it right away. Um, it will mix a little bit cloudy. It's totally normal. It distributes as soon as it goes in the tank. It clears right up. Never have any issues with that. And if you do leave it mixing overnight, um, it will cause a little bit of precipitation. So you want to mix it until it's the right salinity, and then you use it right after that, or let it sit just non-mixed for the night. Well, let's put this in. Oh, man. Scott, we need a mop. Right? Yep. Yes. Order from you, line. You heard the man. We'll probably have it before this video gets done. Yeah, probably. <laughs> What's also very important here, this is the first time we're doing this, power outage test. Basically, right now, the pump is not plugged in. Every tub is draining the remaining water out from when we remove those little elbows, and the sump is now full with the water change water. When we plug this now back in, it's going to determine where this sump running height is. As long as it's not below this water line, hey, a little bit, a couple inches there, room still, but as long as it's not too far below that and we don't have to add too much more water should be right on so in case this place ever loses power that sump won't overflow with all the water from three different vats but that ck pump running now Ooh, it sounds so good when it purrs oh yes this is going to be a rack i'm going to put some pvc legs underneath this i'm going to place it here underneath these pipes at that height so I'll build some legs, go cut this down to where it fits in there, yep. and that will be what we put filter floss on top of, so the water will immediately hit that first thing. It's easier than having to change a lot of socks at this place. And oh, so that's gonna catch all the mechanical filtration? All the, oh, this will be your mechanical, exactly. Your uh, blue bonded pads, we'll just use those. We yep. use them on our service accounts, and we buy them in three foot by 100 foot long rolls of these things, so it's the most cost efficient thing for us to do here. Wait, Chris, I'm a freshwater scrub, so like, what side goes up, blue or white? I don't know. I'm gonna put the blue side up. OSA, okay. baby.
All right, Chris, so we're basically right. done? Pads in there. It's done to scrub all the algae off. Here you go, Joe. Oh. Have oh. fun. Okay. Bye, I guess. Okay, Chris, so I was just talking with you. You're scrubbing the algae now, and I was saying how easy it's coming off. Yeah, Can I so explain these, why? These tubs are the same material as PVC piping is made out of, so the extremely smooth surface doesn't allow for much algae to really grow in any pores or anything. It's much like glass, so a lot of times you scrape your glass, it comes off very easy. This is the beginning of the ugly stages of it. You know, there's not really much um, bad algae. It's mostly diatoms, a little bit of GHA starting to grow. And one of the other good things about these tubs in general, I was just telling Joe, is that um, it's good for the environment. This is 70% material of this tub is recycled PVC piping already. So the recycled plastics are inside the tub and then the surface coating and the outside is the newer um, coating on there, like new product. So just having that 70% recycled material really helps contribute back to, you know, wasteful environments and stuff like that. So this is really good to have uh, be using that in an aquaculture facility. Water change is complete. The water's clearing up now. The filter pad is working absolutely fantastic. The sump is working really good. So we're going to tidy up for the day and we're going to get out of here and bring over some corals tomorrow morning. Thank you for watching another episode of what we're doing here at the Ocean Sea Aquaculture Coral Research Laboratory. All of it. It's all good. Keep on reefing, baby. Woo! I don't even understand how this even happens. Like, ah! Oh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm so lucky at this. This is just out of control. Chris, what's that, number 20? <laughs> number 20, and it's the 20th time, probably the, the 60th time, because we opened three bags each, that he has squirted water onto himself Yo, just by cutting a bag. Look at this, this is kinda cool. I'm gonna go somewhere, it's gonna be like, dude. Where are you gonna go? Home? Dragon Palace. <laughs> yes,